there, it's time for another basic science lesson. And today, we'll be looking at the topic simple chemical equations. Now, the objective of this lesson is to help learners to define and describe chemical reactions and chemical equations. Describe how to balance simple chemical equations, give examples of balanced equations, and describe the law of conservation of mass as the basis of balancing chemical equations. Now, moving ahead, we'll be looking at chemical reactions. A chemical reaction takes place when different elements combine with each other to form a new substance that is different from the original substances or elements from which it was made. Now it involves the production of a lot of energy. A chemical reaction is a chemical change. Now matter undergoes two changes, physical and chemical changes. Now a chemical change describes the change in the composition of matter. Now if you look at this uh, image right here, you can see that we are describing the four basic types of chemical reactions. There are others. But these four basic types are the ones that we are going to describe. So number one, we have synthesis reaction, which in which elements are joined together. Example here, we have um, hydrogen reacting with oxygen to give water. The composition reaction, this reaction is a kind of reaction in which a compound breaks into parts. As you can see right here, this is a compound and breaks into parts example we have water right here breaking into hydrogen and oxygen we also have the simple displacement reaction this is how it looks like in this kind of reaction the single element replaces an element a single element replaces an element in a compound as you have here you have zinc reacting with hydro uh, hydrogen chloride and you can see that the chlorine uh, the hydrogen has been displaced and the zinc has uh, has formed a compound with chlorine now finally we have the double displacement reaction. In a double displacement reaction, an element from each of the two compounds switch places as you have in tetrahydrous of a six acid and sodium hydroxide. So you can see that the hydroxide has, has um, replaced, you can see that the hydrogen has joined with the hydroxide while the sodium has, uh, has joined with tetrahydrous of a six ions so that is that about the four basic chemical reaction now moving along we'll be looking at chemical equations what is a chemical equation a chemical equation represents a chemical change that is a chemical reaction by means of symbols and formula the equation must be balanced that is the number of atoms of each element on both sides of the equation must be the same so as you can see right here that the chemical equation is a written representation of the chemical Reaction. Now, this is a typical chemical reaction where um, two molecules of hydrogen gas is reacting with one molecule of oxygen gas to produce liquid water. Now, as you can see here, we have the reactant side, we have the reaction arrow, and we have the product. Now, this is the chemical formula for the product right here. And all these things that you see in bracket, they are the states of the matter. Hydrogen is, is gas, oxygen is gas, while water is liquid. Now we also have the subscript which you are already familiar with and the coefficient which describes the number of molecule of the substance itself. Now it says here that you should list reactants on the left side of the reaction. So the reactants are on the left side of the reaction. And you have the arrow, then the product on the right side of this reaction arrow. So this is how a chemical equation is made up. Now we'll be looking at uh, balancing a chemical equation now in balancing a chemical equation it is often necessary to introduce numerical coefficients to ensure that no atoms are created or destroyed this process of finding and introducing coefficients is known as balancing of equation now there are some steps to note in writing a balanced uh, chemical equation number one you write a word equation for the reaction Number two, you write an unbalanced formula equation for the reaction. And three, you, you add coefficients to balance the formula equation. Now, as you have here, we have an example of, of a reaction. We have nitrogen gas reacting with hydrogen gas to produce ammonia gas. Now, as you can see right here, 
the subscript 2 here shows that we have two atoms of nitrogen reacting with two atoms of hydrogen to produce one molecule of ammonia gas now if you look at the reactants you can see that the number of atoms of nitrogen is two and on the product side the number of nitrogen is one we also see that on the reactant side the, num the number of hydrogen atoms is two and the number of hydrogen atoms is three so this shows that this formula is not balanced so in order to balance this equation uh, we need to look for the lowest common multiple between um, two and one in nitrogen and the lowest common multiple between two and three um, in the hydrogen atom in order to balance it now looking and looking here you can see that the common lowest common multiple between two and one is two so in other words if you have two right here if you multiply by one it will give us two and if you multiply two by one it will still give us two so since uh, this one indicates that it is one so there's no need for us to add anything here but if we put two here you can see that we have two nitrogen on the product side and two nitrogen on the reactant side which shows that nitrogen is already balanced by adding these two coefficient right here now let's look at hydrogen as well here in nitrogen in the reactant side we have two atoms of hydrogen in the product side we have three atoms of hydrogen so what is the co lowest common multiple of two and three definitely it is six so that means that if you multiply three by two it will give us six and if you multiply two by three it will give us six so by adding the coefficient three here it shows that we have the total number of six hydrogen atom on the reactor side and these two coefficient right here if you multiply by three it will give us six hydrogen atoms so you can see that we have six hydrogen atoms on the reactant side and six hydrogen atoms on the product side which shows that this particular equation is balanced now moving along we have further examples in balancing chemical equation now as you can see here you can see that copper here is reacting with silver trazonitrate 5 to give copper trazonitrate 5 and silver so you can see that the number of atoms of copper here is one uh, silver one nitrogen one oxygen three and on the product side we have the number of copper to still be one silver one nitrogen two and oxygen six so you can see that there's an imbalance in the number of atoms of nitrogen and oxygen that's why it's underlined here in the reactant side which doesn't correspond with number of nitrogen and oxygen on the product side so what do we do now if you look at sil uh, if you look at sil uh, nitrogen right here the number of nitrogen here is one number of nitrogen here is two now the lowest common multiple for for one and two is definitely two so if you put uh, two uh, two coefficients here the coefficient of two here you can see that the nitrogen is already balanced because you have two nitrogen here and two nitrogen here so which means that our nitrogen is balanced but now our um, our silver and the oxygen is also balanced because two we have three um, oxygen atoms times two which will make it what six so you can see that our nitrogen and oxygen is already balanced but you can see that silver has been affected on the reactant side so all we need to do is uh, find the uh, lowest common multiple between two and one which we know that is two so all we just need to do is add two coefficients here then you can see that our silver atom is already balanced now moving along we have examples of balanced equation so as you can see right here this is the unbalanced equation this is the balanced equation so if you count the number of um, the atoms of each element on the reactant side you find it to be equal to the number uh, uh, number of atoms of each element on the product side so that is what we have here i, I want to pause this video and examine uh, the number of atoms the total number of atoms on the reactant side to see whether it corresponds with the total number of atoms in the product side it will help you in your understanding now moving along let's look at the basis for which we balance um, chemical equations which is the law of conservation of mass now the law of conservation of mass states that matter is neither created nor destroyed during a chemical reaction but changes from one form to another it also states that in a chemical reaction, the total amount of matter remains 
constant. Balancing a chemical equation is possible due to the law of conservation of mass. It is the principle behind balancing of chemical equations. Now, as you can see here, we have methane reacting with um, oxygen gas to form carbon dioxide and water. Now, if you see the, re um, um, the relative um, um, atomic mass of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, if you put them all together, you can see that methane here is 16. Uh, oxygen here, we have um, 16. For adding them together, it gives us 80 grams. Now, on the product side, if you have all, if you add all the relative atomic masses of of um, elements in carbon dioxide and water, it will still give us exactly 80 grams. So you can see that the law of conservation of mass has been in balancing uh, chemical equation. You can see that the law of conservation of mass has been what has been adhered to because you have 80 grams. In the reactor side, we also have 80 grams in the product side, which shows that the law of conservation of mass is relevant in balancing chemical equations. Now, moving along, we've come to the end of the lesson. Let's take a quick look at the summary. A chemical reaction takes place when different elements combine with each other to form a new substance that is different from the original substances or elements from which it was made. There are various types of chemical reactions, such as combination reaction combustion reaction, displacement reaction, decomposition reaction, and so on. A chemical equation represents a chemical change, that is chemical reaction, by means of symbols and formula. In balancing a chemical equation, it is often necessary to introduce numerical coefficients to ensure that no atoms are created or destroyed. This process of finding and introducing coefficients is known as balancing of equations. Now before we go, I want to pause this video and attempt to balance this uh, chemical reaction. The spaces has been provided, so you need to write it down and balance it so as to find out how much of the lessons that you have actually understood. Please, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And I'll see you again in the next lesson. Bye-bye.